I honestly wasn't sure whether or not the fallopian tubes were attached to the ovaries or not, but it's interesting to know that they are in fact not attached to the ovaries. They are in fact not attached to the ovaries. Um, I've shown a, I have this little model back here that kind of shows it, but maybe I'll just try to pull up a picture. I'm gonna show an actual image from a pelvic laparoscopy. So um, if you don't wanna see, it's not bloody, but if you don't wanna see a surgical image, then this is not a great picture actually, <laughs> um, but I'll show it to you. And it actually doesn't really even help because it kind of looks like they're actually attached. But so I guess in some ways they are attached. Like you can see here, this is a little membrane, like membranous area that's um, between the ovary and the tube. So this is the fallopian tube, ovary, utero ovarian ligament, round ligament, and the, um, and that's the IP ligament. Um, and this is called the mesosalpinx. It's like between the tube and the ovary. This is not attached though. The fembria do not attach. So it doesn't actually, I don't know if that actually even helps. I'm astonished surgeons can find anything it looks like. Yeah, I mean, I think people seeing pictures like this, it should be um, mandatory before you have surgery so that you understand like, uh, it's not like a textbook. It's, it can be really, oh, this one's a little better. Yeah, so that's the ovary there, and then the tube is kind of overlying it here. But this is in someone's pelvis who has like um, carbon dioxide inside so that they could have surgery. And so everything doesn't sit like this, like it's all squished down together. So they, they kind of fall into the pelvis. I don't know, this is um, inexplicably difficult to explain today for some reason. This one is actually pretty good. So. Yeah, okay, so you can see here, this is the fembria of the fallopian tube, and that's the fembria. And then this is the tube, it's going down and attaching to the uterus down there. And then the ovary is underneath it, but this is not physically attached to the ovary. Does that make sense? And then cervix, but it's on the other side, obviously. This is like from the pelvis side. Um, and then the bladder is here and bowel rectum all down here yes this is a non-pregnant uterus <laughs> everybody ah what did i just walk in on sorry we are talking about how the ovaries are not attached to the fallopian tube and yeah i guess it's not very helpful for me to go oh yeah if you don't want to see a surgical picture like don't look for a minute <laughs> um but uh because people could just click in but um pouch of douglas is just an area that's at the base of the pelvis. Um, it's a space, uh, probably named after a dude. And it, we use it just to anatomically describe um, a space in the back of the pelvis that sometimes is relevant to operating or will maybe have fluid or blood in it if somebody has something going on. Um, sometimes is also called rectouterine pouch. Let's see if I can find a photo of, this isn't a um, surgical image, I'll just show you. Why are these images so small? <laughs> it makes no sense to me. There we go. All right, so, okay. So pouch of Douglas would be right here, back here. So this is the pubic bone. This is the bladder. This is the uterus. This is the vagina. This is the pouch of Douglas. So it's just a space between the uterus and the rectum. Um, it's not actually like this though. I mean, in real life, when you're just walking around in day to day, it's more of what we call a potential space where it's like laying right up next to the rectum. The uterus is usually right next to the rectum or maybe a little bit away, but it's not very far away, but it can fill with fluid. So it's a potential space, if that makes sense. All the lady parts are named after dudes, yeah. Um, all the things are named after dudes. 